I edit my own videos. I believe that this is one of the best skills that a YouTuber must possess and the requirement to get comfortable in using a video editing software is a necessary step to be better in your chosen vocation. Prior to jumping to DaVinci Resolve Studio this year, I was actually using Final Cut Pro on my Mac. I always thought, and this is just a matter of opinion guys, that uh, Final Cut Pro was a simpler and better editing software than Adobe Premiere Pro. Everything changed when I tried DaVinci Resolve for the first time. The rest is obviously history. Today, this is not about DaVinci Resolve, but it's about this little box right here, which makes my editing life easier than ever before. This is the Toolbox. This is essentially like a macro keyboard, which will allow you to do one-handed operations on various applications. Today, I'm going to walk you through my editing setup and how I am able to maximize Toolbox. I am not in any way an expert in video editing, but I enjoy doing it and I find ways to edit more and learn in the process. Oh, by the way, this video is not sponsored by Toolbox. However, they sent this over to me for me to experience and review. Toolbox did not pay us anything to say something about their product or their competitors. Now, what is Toolbox? Toolbox is essentially a controller for creators. If you have this, you can basically assign specific buttons and shortcuts to streamline your editing workflow. Now, before I walk you through my workflow with Toolbox, let me first tell you what you can find inside the box. You'll get quick start guide, safety instructions, international warranty card, the Toolbox, and a braided Type-C to Type-A cable. The Toolbox is really well built. It has some heft to it, and I think that this adds to the stability and quality of this controller. The base feels very solid and it can firmly stay put wherever you want to place it, thanks to its uh, four rubber feet, which you can find right here. It's built very well and the only thing that I'm really iffy about is the texture of the controller. It has this rubbery feel which over time might become sticky just like some of the other peripherals and equipment I've used in the past. Now this is just an assumption and I might turn out to be wrong over time. Now, as you can see right here, Toolbox has three main sections. You have rotating, you have primers, and also kits. Overall, Toolbox has 14 buttons. There are three rotating, there are also four primes, and seven kits. All these buttons may be customized to accommodate specific combinations and keyboard shortcuts via its Toolbox console. The console is essentially the brain of the controller. This is where you'll set all the shortcuts and combinations to make things easier when editing a video. Now, I commend Toolbox for making the console very user-friendly and contextual, which is definitely a great help for both newbies and professional editors. When you're at the console, moving or touching a button on the Toolbox will bring you to the specific setting of that button you just pressed. The companion application is technically your playground prior to editing. Apart from creating presets or modifying existing ones, you can also tag each button respectively so you can easily remember specific actions the buttons can do. If you want to practice and get yourself familiar with all the presets you just cooked or made, what you just need to do is to fire up the guide and see the full layout of each section you just customized. It's actually very amazing. Now, at this point, let me show you how I use Toolbox on the Vinci Resolve with the preset I prepared. Let's go. All right, so we're now here at our workstation and we're using the Vinci Resolve. Just a quick overview of how I'm using the Vinci Resolve and also Toolbox. Now, I've already placed some clips here in my timeline and uh, with uh, the dial, I'll be able to go forward and backward very smoothly as you can see right here. And if I press or if I turn the knob at the middle, I can zoom in and out of my timeline. Now, more than anything else, with the preset that I'm currently using right now, if I scroll up and down using this button right here, I'll be able to go forward or fast forward and go backward as well, uh, the video that I'm currently playing right now. Now, if I jump onto the uh, media pool right here, um, what I did is if I want uh, a clip, a certain clip, uh, let's say let's go over with this clip right here i want to be able to uh, use this clip i can just simply press this button for in and then i go here for out this is actually my preset right now i've defined that and all i need to do is simply drag this to my timeline and that's it 
Now, um, since this one is uh, music cued, uh, what I want to do is uh, to be more particular with the sound cues, with the beats. So I zoom in, I go over here, and then cut a portion of the video that I just dragged from the media pool or from my uh, the shot that I actually wanted to use down to the timeline. Now that I have already dragged it, I just simply have to press this button, which is in my preset is the cut tool. If I click that or tap that rather, this is uh, the short key. I click over here and then click this portion, which is a tool rather, that would mean I can now delete it. Now to delete it, my shortcut is double tapping the short button right here. That's it. So let's go ahead. Now, normally, I would uh, press Alt for me to zoom in and out. There's no need for that anymore. I can just simply press and hold this button right here. This is the side button, and I can already zoom in and out if I want to. Or if I don't want to use that, I can just simply use the knob at the middle. Now that I've already cut the desired portion of that particular clip, all I need to do now is to go over the timeline again, press this, and then hit play. My play button is the one at the top of the knob. Cool. I can just simply press this button if I want to pause or play it if I want to. Okay, so that's the end of uh, that particular portion right there. Now, if I want to add more, then all you have to do, all I have to do is to just simply go through my videos again, select the ones that I want. And let's say, let's go over here, and I have a clip here, which I might like to use. Not this one. All right, I like this one. So again. With uh, my preset, I just have to press this button and then until the desired section of this particular video, and then I press O. And then I drag it over to my timeline. So normally, I would, I would use the keyboard, but now that I already have a toolbox, this will be now my dedicated button to navigate through and use some of the features and functions of the Venture Resolve. And again, I am just using here the toolbox okay now if I want to go over again play button and then go back press and then hold the side button if I want to fine-tune more or everything right here I hold it zoom in zoom in further all right I guess that's about it that's the end of the clip uh, audio clip rather and play it Okay, I want uh, the end of uh, this clip, video clip, to end at that particular portion. I press the cut tool, cut, move over to A. Again, A is this particular button right here. I just have a shortcut key on that and then tap it again and double tap short key. And then that's it. I was able to cut the that particular portion of the video. And that's it. Play it. And then that's it, that's the end of it. And then we just have to drag one more clip from our media pool, which I might like. So I like this one from this point to here. That one kind of moved. I don't want that. Let's go over this one, I like this. There, clip in, clip out, and then drag it over. Zoom out, play. Two, three, four. Okay, then cut it. That's it. Of course, there's a lot of things to still understand and know about how I can use Toolbox to make my editing life easier. Honestly, I still have yet to know more of them. 
Now, um, I will be sharing with you the preset that I've been using for DaVinci Resolve. Uh, I would encourage you to go and check it out at uh, Toolbox's website. If uh, you want, you can download that and you can even modify it further according to actually what you want and what you can be comfortable in using. As you can see, Toolbox can definitely be a helpful tool to get yourself done more efficiently and quickly. While I've talked much about editing a video, Toolbox can also be used on Adobe Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Premiere, and even Final Cut Pro. The fact that you can use this on either Windows or Mac makes it appealing for all sorts of creators. Toolbox is not perfect though. Apart from the material they use on the controller's body, I find the rotating parts, especially the one on the lower left, really small. Now, this is coming from someone who has big hands and fingers, but I truly understand. This is probably for the purpose of making it more compact. Again, I truly understand that. I also would have wanted to have more tactile or clicky buttons with a little higher actuation force requirement to avoid accidental triggers. Now, how about the price? Toolbox is available for $169. You can check out the link below to go directly to their page. It's an affiliate link, so if you buy one, we'll get a small cut from it. Now, to sweeten the deal, you can also use our discount code, which is now displayed right here, to get a $10 discount. If you're buying from the Philippines, this will not be subject to VAT or value-added tax because it's less than 10,000 pesos. Well, that's it. This has been our video of the Toolbox Controller for Creators. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want more videos like this, don't forget to click the notification bell below. This has been Gian. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next one.